Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on specialty concentration options um, across the William James College graduate study programs. Uh, my name is Sarah Johansson, and I work here in the marketing department, um, and I will be your host for today's webinar. So I'll give everyone a brief overview of William James College um, and go through a few housekeeping items, then we can get into presenters. So we can move on to the next slide. And today you will be hearing from Dr. Natalie Court, who's the director of the African and Caribbean Mental Health Concentration. Um, we have Dr. Catherine Buki, who is the director of the Asian Mental Health Concentration, and Dr. Jill Bloom, who is director of the Global Mental Health Concentration. Um, Dr. Court and Dr. Bloom are also um, co-directors of the college's Center for Multicultural and Global Mental Health. Um, and then we also have Dr. Mari Carmen Benassar, who is the director of the Lucero Latinx Mental Health Program, and Dr. Jenny D'Olympia, who is our interim director of the Military and Veteran Psychology Concentration and the Train Vets to Treat Vets Program. Um, we also have Mario Murga here today, who is our Director of Admissions, and we'll speak a little bit about that. So we can move on to the next slide and get into today's webinar. So here you can see um, our campus. We are located in Newton, Massachusetts, um, which is just outside of Boston. So on the map in the corner there, you can see that the college is easily accessible from a number of major highways, um, making it really easy for our students to get to campus when they need to. Um, it also puts us close to many great organizations and different opportunities in Boston and in the surrounding areas. Um, so many of our students have field placement sites, internships, um, a lot of different connections um, in this area. So on the next slide, um, I'm just gonna go through the core values here at William James College, um, which really extend across all of the work here. Um, so experiential education is an important part of every one of our academic programs. Um, and right from day one, our students are putting into practice um, everything that they're learning in the classroom. Um, social responsibility is key to our mission, and we really are proud of all the work of our students, faculty and staff um, that they're doing through academics, advocacy, um, and much more to make a difference in our communities. Um, and then we really want all of our students to graduate from William James College, not only having grown professionally, but personally as well. Through mentorship, advising, and community building, our students leave here with many personal and professional relationships and experiences. Um, overall, across the entire college community, we have a commitment to diversity, inclusion, social justice, and intercultural understanding. Um, we offer a comprehensive training model to students. We have a lot of advocacy work um, that happens throughout the college. Uh, we host events, discussions, um, and a lot more to really educate, learn, and take action. So on the next slide, here you can see um, an overview of the different programs and concentration options um, that are available, uh, the ones that will be talked about today. Um, so you can see that within the concentrations, there really can be a mix of different students from across the college. Um, okay, so on the next slide, we can get into um, a few housekeeping things. So um, this is a live webinar and we really wanna make sure that everyone um, gets the most out of it. So at any point throughout the presentation, feel free to submit questions into the question box um, and there'll be a few opportunities to get those answered. Um, and lastly, um, in the handout section, you can download um, all the slides from today for your reference. So we can get started with a quick poll and just um, let us know uh, what program you're most interested in. This will give us a little bit of um, a sense of who's in the audience today. Okay, great. So a lot of people are interested in clinical psychology, which is great to see. Um, and we have some other interests across the board. So without further ado, I will um, gladly introduce our first presenter, Dr. Natalie Court. Hello, everybody. I am Dr. Natalie Court. I am an assistant professor in the clinical psychology program. And as Sarah shared, I direct the African and Caribbean Mental Health Concentration. So I'm sure that you all know that 
the U.S. is becoming more multiracial, multiethnic, multilingual, multilingual, and the world is increasingly globalized. And as a consequence, there's a growing need for culturally competent psychologists and mental health counselors who are capable of ethically serving historically underserved and marginalized communities. We know in the United States that about 40 million uh, black people um, exist. Uh, however, we are also aware of the fact that more than 90% of clinicians and psychologists are identify as white, non-Hispanic. We also know that as a consequence of the lack of diversity in our mental health field, in the psychology field, there are higher rates of misdiagnosis and more poor quality care provided to racial ethnic minorities. So the primary goal of the African and Caribbean Mental Health Concentration, which is a college-wide concentration, is to equip graduate students with the knowledge and skills that are necessary to provide culturally sensitive and evidence-based psychological and mental health services to individuals and families of Black, African, African-American, and Caribbean ancestry. So in this program, and if you can turn to the next slide, in this program, students will be introduced to culturally responsive assessment methods, diagnostic evaluation tools, and psychological interventions with a focus on the interconnected behavioral, social, emotional, and spiritual needs of Black clients. Concentration students will appreciate how culture shapes and influences behaviors in cross-cultural and multicultural context. In addition, they will critically examine issues of diversity and cross-cultural considerations in the diagnostic process, as well as in clinical treatment uh, processes. We really are focused on expanding students' knowledge of psychosocial factors that are germane to providing culturally sensitive psychotherapeutic services to Black, African, African-American, and Caribbean individuals, families, and communities. In addition to the classes that are provided, both at a major area of study level and an emphasis level, students in the concentration also participate in service learning programs and cultural immersion experiences in international settings, such as Guyana, Haiti, Trinidad, and Kenya, and those programs help to enhance students' sensitivity to diversity and difference. It also helps to increase students' awareness of ethics and standards that are appropriate to professional practice with diverse populations around the world. It also really expands students' global perspectives about psychological theories, as well as the application of, uh, of those theories to individuals coming from uh, culturally diverse backgrounds. Next slide. So I'd just like to highlight um, a couple of things. For um, students interested in this concentration, you should know that um, you have a number of opportunities to either be in this concentration at a major area of study level. And if you're in the doctoral programs, then that uh, translates to nine credits. If you are um, interested in taking it at an emphasis level, then that translates to five credits. In addition, if you are in one of our master's program, you can also um, have a major area of study in African and Caribbean mental health, and that is also five credits. So there are a number of courses that are integral to this particular concentration and those courses include um, mental health disparities course that really takes a deep dive into the disparities that exist in our field. We also provide students with an opportunity to be introduced to historical perspectives around mental health in the African and Caribbean, mental, African and Caribbean communities. And then we also provide students with a course that focuses on assessment and treatment 
of individuals from African and Caribbean heritage. Dr. Bloom, who's gonna talk in a bit, also teaches a course on global mental health and program development and evaluation, which we recommend uh, that our students take part in. So I hope that the information shared today uh, is of use to you, and I hope that um, you might be interested in signing up for this particular concentration. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Court. Um, and now we can move on to our next presenter, who is Dr. Catherine Buki. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, so as similar to Dr. Court, I'm also an assistant professor um, and in the clinical PsyD program. And um, as Sarah had mentioned, I am the director of the Asian Mental Health Program, which uh, was recently launched as of last, actually this past um, February, which we're very excited about. And it's very similar to the other concentrations you, you hear about. Um, in terms of training and recruiting students really to be able to be a cultural and linguistically culturally competent working with Asians. So for this particular concentration, we would like for students to be interested in learning about the historical and social cultural context in which different Asian subgroups have formed their identities. And not too many people know this, but in the Asian continent alone, there are about 55 countries. And so that's very vast and we would not be able to cover all of the different subgroups, but we'll be focusing on a few that uh, we feel the students would be interacting with in their practicum sites in the United States. Um, but again, we, are we would like for students to come in to develop cultural competence, humility, and being able to really be able to work with our Asian communities in, um, in the US. Um, next slide, please. Similar to what Dr. Court had explained, there are students who are coming in, they could major at a major area of study in the PsyD program um, uh, or a doctoral level, um, and there'll be nine credits or five credits. In the master's counseling program, again, it will be an emphasis area of five credits. So the courses are uh, mental health disparities um, are open to all students. And in particular for the Asian mental health, there are three particular we're, we're developing. One is introduction to Asian cultures. Again, it's a very experiential course, looking at different identities and the his, historical perspective of, of in, being in the US. We will also be um, developing a course talking about psychological assessments. Again, there are very few norms in the US for different Asian groups. And so students will learn which testing to choose and how to adapt that. And also the third course will be about clinical formulation and diagnostic. Again, um, our DSM is very much of a Western perspective. And again, how do you, how do you start to adapt that to different cultures that per, perhaps have a different world, worldview and how, they, and how they describe their symptoms? Um, next slide, please. And so, so um, again, we will have uh, students, we will be placed in different practicum sites. We would like students to have at least 25% of the training experience with uh, Asian heritage. I've listed a few sites that are already as part of our um, school um, that, are, that have a large Asian population. So students will have an opportunity to be able to to have training. Um, and with the immersion experience, we are developing, uh, particularly for Vietnam right now, to be for students to be able to have international experience, as well as local immersion projects as well. And we are really starting to develop the conferences and hoping and different activities. Um, so in just in February, we launched the inaugural um, Asian Mental Program with Lunar New Year, and we're recently going to have bonsai workshops. So students will have opportunities for different activities, not just academic, and um, but really being able to be part of the community and having different um, uh, experiences. I believe. Thank you. I believe that's my own. That's that's it. So thank you very thank you, much, Dr. Buki. Yes, thank you. Um, and we can move on to our next presenter. Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Jill Bloom. Um, hello, I'm very happy to be here and to welcome all of you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm Dr. Jill Bloom and I'm a professor in the clinical psych department. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna be talking about the global mental health concentration, which is the um, 
third of our four concentrations that you'll be learning about today that are, are all part of the Center for Multicultural and Global Mental Health. Um, so as I have up here on this first slide is, um, um, and just as a background, that today there are more than 65 million people that are displaced globally. And this is more than any other time since World War II. And this includes both internally displaced populations due to conflicts, climate change, uh, which are often referred to as climate refugees, uh, and uh, refugees also due to, to um, uh, conflicts. And so what we've begun to see worldwide is uh, an increasing attention that focuses on what has been referred to as the treatment gap. And that is the mental health inequities between low and income and high and middle and high income countries. Uh, and that um, these include indigenous populations, refugee populations, as I've also just mentioned, and the urban poor. And this emerging field of global mental health seeks to prov improve professional practices and research, advocacy and awareness, and policies and programs, and um, also the social environmental factors that affect health and psychological, uh, psychosocial well-being. I often like to um, you know, comment on the even the term global mental health, that in many parts of the world, mental health is not a concept or uh, that has much meaning. And so the, the uh, term of what we are addressing from different local standpoints is social emotional well-being. Um, so if we can go to the next slide. Um, so the goals of the, of the Global Mental Health Program are to train graduate students in across all uh, departments and to prepare them to provide culturally sen sensitive and evidence-based approaches that emphasize the social determinants of mental health, very critically the local needs and priorities and culturally informed community capacity building. Um, again, this is something that we share across all of our um, of our concentrations in, in CMGMH. Um, and the emerging field of global mental health, um, again, wants to improve all of the, of the psychological practices um, in Ruth research, advocacy, and awareness. Um, so next program, next uh, slide, please. And the coursework, um, the concentration courses, they uh, expose students to, and I think very importantly in global mental health, to interdisciplinary and multi-sectoral multi approaches to global mental health initiatives, again, to research program development and evaluation. And, um, and some of the courses that we offer are, and, and again, across all of our CMGMH concentrations, the mental health disparities course, uh, an introduction to global mental health is a course that really that looks at from a from local perspectives and ways of uh, of understanding the social emotional meaning of what we may um, think more of psychological concepts and to translate those into local local terms. Uh, we also offer a course and. Of the fundamentals of global mental health, and I'm very, very pleased that one of the um, partners uh, for this program is with the Harvard Program of Refugee Trauma, um, HPRT, at Harvard, and Dr. Richard Malika, the director of that program, is on our faculty and teaches uh, the fundamental global mental health course. And, um, and Dr. Malika's work, he's really a pioneer in this field for the last uh, nearly 40 years, so really very, very pleased to have him be part of our our program. Uh, and then the fourth course is, um, and as Dr. Court had mentioned before, a program, a global mental health program, uh, a, a course in program development and evaluation. Uh, it's very, very important in doing any sort of, of cross-cultural and global work is that, and, and often the work is developing programs, but how to develop programs in partnership with local foundations, local stakeholders is critical to this work. And a very, very important part of program development is evaluating if that work is meeting the needs and addressing the concepts that are um, uh, in, in um, built for the community capacity building. Um, and we also have the surface learning programs that are open to um, students of, of 
uh, across all of our concentrations, and but the global students are are able to attend uh, programs in Haiti, Kenya, Guyana, Trinidad, and with some Spanish proficiency uh, in Ecuador as well. And we really see the immersion programs and, and our students continually attest to this, that it gives a, a very immediate transformative understanding of working in different cultures and with different concepts. Um, and we also, for the last five years, have or four years, uh, to be precise, have been working with a local foundation, a local agency here in Boston, um, and uh, with uh, resettling Syrian refugee families. And so we have, for these four years, been providing the social emotional support for the eight families that have re relocated in the Boston area. And that's been a really wonderful experience and opportunity for our students to work with um, uh, one of our students, a global student for several years, has co-led a women's group with the uh, Syrian um, uh, women uh, from this project and we've done different activities with children uh, and uh, and then different meetings and and working with parents and adjusting to American culture uh, and we also had uh, just begun before the pandemic uh, to train uh, global students but also students from other CMG GMH concentrations uh, in conducting asylum evaluations so there are many opportunities to really expand one's understanding of this field of global mental health and to work with um, global populations internationally or uh, refugee and immigrant populations here in, in, um, in the Boston area. Um, and some of the work that we have over um, the last uh, several years that we do uh, have hold global mental health conferences every other year. We have a very successful conference on envisioning a humanitarian psychology last fall and really hope to continue the work that we're doing in this area. So I believe that's um, all for my presentation. I look forward to any questions you may have. Okay, great. Thank you, Dr. Bloom. Um, as she just mentioned, uh, we're now gonna take a little break um, and answer any questions that you may have um, on any of the concentrations that have already been talked about. Um, so as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, you can take a moment and um, submit those through the question box. Um, and we'll answer a few now. Um, but there'll also be another opportunity towards the end. Uh, so it looks like we have one question here um, on when do I declare a concentration? Um, so uh, perhaps uh, Dr. Court, could you maybe uh, talk about that a little? All right, hi. Um, so different programs at um, WJC, different concentrations have different um, enrollment dates um, for the concentrations in the Center for Multicultural and Global Mental Health, the ones, some of the ones that we're talking about today. Um, we are expecting students to sign up for the concentration um, generally in uh, the, at the end of the fall in November um, at any point in time in their graduate training. Um, Jill, can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes. Um, so we do, we begin courses in the spring semester. Um, and so students are eligible to enroll, as Dr. Cote was saying, in um, during the fall. And we set the date of, of beginning of, or middle of November so that students can then enroll uh, during registration for the spring courses. Um, so that's the earliest opportunity, but students can also enroll during second year uh, again, depending on in the clinical program, which is a five-year program, uh, in the counseling and OLP programs, and the master's, uh, the um, MCAGs in in the school psychology program, they would enroll in during their first year, since it is a two-year program. Um, but there are uh, and students are also eligible, again, at the different levels of the concentrations as a major area of study or at the emphasis level, um, students are then eligible for one or two of the immersion programs. And those can begin, students can go on the first immersion after they've taken in their designated concentration, the introductory course for that concentration, which is offered in the spring. Okay, great. Um, we have another question here about the Asian mental health concentration. 
um, it says, with the concentration being so new, um, how many students have uh, declared it so far and how is this first year um, going? So uh, Dr. Buki, if you could comment a little on that. Yeah, so thank you for that question. So yes, it is very new and um, as Dr. Court and Dr. Bloom has said that the, the students will declare the concentration um, in, a, in a month in November. Um, as of right now, there are 11 students have expressed interest in the concentration um, and uh, we've been talking to them and, and, part and already some have already participated in, in, um, in activities uh, for the Asian Mental Health Program. Um, so right now, there's a generate a lot of buzz and interest and we, we will see as it builds out. Okay, great. Um, so that's all the questions we have submitted so far. Um, as I mentioned, there will be another opportunity at the end of the presentations after you've heard from um, our next presenters. So you can definitely um, keep submitting them at any point throughout the presentation and we will have some time to get through um, as many as possible at the end. So um, we can move on to our next presenter, and it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Mari Carmen Benassar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, I welcome um, everybody. I'm happy to continue um, with the Latinx mental health concentration. Um, I am Mari Carmen Benassar. I'm a doctor in psychology, and I am formerly in the counseling and behavioral health department, the master's level programs. Um, and I teach some in the clinical program. I um, would like to kind of practice what I preach by studying that I am with uh, from Dominican Republic of the Spaniard background. Um, the, as this is very much part of what we uh, engage in uh, exploration in our identities and, and uh, of our patients and so forth uh, during our academic and uh, involvement at WJC. Um, and why a Latinx mental health program? Um, this program was developed 14 years ago in response to a great need in the community uh, and welcomed its first group of students in 2006. Um, it is very well documented that the uh, Latinx and Hispanic individuals and families are in great need of mental health services, not only in Spanish and Portuguese, but also services that are culturally attuned to address the unique needs, uh, the unique characteristics based on our regional differences, unique social political circumstances, immigration status, and so on. So the goal of the program is to recruit, train, educate, uh, and mentor health, uh, mental health uh, providers from any racial and ethnic background um, to work with and address individual needs and systemic needs, the, the systemic disparities and inequalities uh, in health services uh, in these communities. Um, so we pride ourselves on building a strong network of uh, providers, a, a community and community uh, during not only your years at WJC, but hopefully well beyond that. We are very close in contact with our alumni and graduates uh, who serve as mentors and connections uh, in different communities all across the country. Um, so we pride ourselves in, in really that this is uh, beyond the years of uh, just the knowledge and academic. Um, last in this part, um, I'll offer that for people who are interested in applying to the LMHP um, a concentration, there is a merit scholarship uh, of $12,000 a year for up to four years uh, to a student who demonstrate a commitment to serve this community. Um, and this is uh, more information is in the website if you are planning to apply to WJC or, um, and or consider the Latino mental health uh, program. Oh, can I have the next slide? Thank you. 
Um, in regard to the courses, um, our template courses are uh, overlap and in concept. Um, so the uh, courses for the Latino mental health really addresses uh, gaining knowledge about the diversity within the Latinx and Hispanic communities uh, uh, in, in the United States, uh, the immigration reasons, the impact of immigration, um, uh, and then again, learning about the unique cultural uh, characteristics that have clinical implications. So courses include a clinical work um, with uh, Latinos, a testing with a psychological testing with Latinos for the ones that are doing a doctoral level, um, a disparities course that is uh, together actually with all the other concentrations that you're hearing um, about the multicultural concentrations. So we join that bigger um, a community. And um, in these, as the other concentrations, also is offered at two levels, major area or emphasis in the major area. It, it, it basically, uh, if you take all the credits uh, based on your uh, program and emphasis, um, if you have a minimum credit, so four or five credits, depending on the programs, uh, but do not complete the, the total. So that's usually done in an individual um, a, Kind of timeline with the students. Um, all courses, this is a question I get a lot, all courses are in English um, uh, with flexibility with, of speaking Spanish based on the level of the group. So each class, each group uh, uh, takes a life of, of its own, if you will. Um, we do as a requirement um, need that people have at least a beginner intermediate um, level of Spanish. Uh, we do have many different ways of supporting your growth in the language if you come with some basic understanding. Um, in the last two years, we have offered, uh, we have brought a professor uh, of Spanish uh, to WJC for the uh, convenience of the students and we offer part of the stipend is paid by uh, the Latino mental health uh, program for any actually uh, of a student in any concentration, not only for the Latino mental health concentration, but if you happen to be in the global or even in the African, Caribbean, Asian, and you're interested in le learning a language, learning Spanish, um, uh, we support that uh, partial uh, tuition for that. Um, and uh, aside from the academic courses, there's as um, the other programs too, a, a practice component, which is included with a percentage in your field, um, clinical fields, um, and a research component for the ones that are in, in the doctoral programs. Um, and last but not least, we offer many cultural activities um, uh, within the community uh, to celebrate, uh, to learn and celebrate the diversity of the Latinx and, and Hispanic communities. Can I have the next slide? And an integral part of our program uh, is the five week immersion um, uh, program that um, we require in Guayaquil, Ecuador. Um, the students uh, here work, they, we go usually in July, August, uh, at the end of the summer. Um, it, usually students take classes in WJC on the summer one, and then these um, immersion programs go during the summer two, the second part of the summer. Um, and uh, when we go to Guayaquil, we have a contract with an Instituto de Neurociencias. It's a consortium of hospitals. Uh, that include treatments for severe mental, um, mentally ill uh, individuals, uh, for the families, uh, substance use. Uh, they have a residential program, um, a day program. Um, so it's a variety of, of uh, modalities that the students get in exposure um, to uh, by working side by side with the local psychologists. Um, all in Spanish. Uh, it also they um, reside with local uh, families. So there's that part academic and uh, clinical um, and also fostering and, and developing the, the language skills. Um, there are Spanish classes um, a, a two or three times a, a week. Um, and basically that's it. It's it. I I will add just to to end that this program really challenges 
um, the comfort um, of the students uh, and really offers an opportunity to engage in, in a serious uh, cultural reflection um, in addition to, uh, to the academic, uh, specific academic learning, we said. I thank you for listening um, and welcome the next uh, speaker. Thank you, Dr. Benassar. So uh, we can move on to our final concentration, and uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Jenny D'Olimpia. Hello, thank you. Um, I am Dr. Jenny D'Olimpia. I'm the Assistant Chair for the Counseling and Behavioral Health Department. I'm the Interim Director for the Military Veteran Psychology and the Train Vets to Treat Vets programs. I'm also the Director for the Master of Arts in Psychology Online program, and I teach in several of our programs. Um, and finally, I'm also um, a veteran of the Air Force. I spent nine years in the Air Force. Um, so today I'll be discussing the military and veteran psychology program. Individuals interested in working with military veterans or their families may want to elect this specialization. Um, this is available in the mental health counseling master's degree program and the clinical psychology doctoral program. Um, and people might want to choose this specialization because they may want to choose um, a career um, in this area that includes, you know, maybe working at the Department of Veterans Affairs or working at a military installation or even working at the state, local or nonprofit level um, with mental health of veterans, um, military or their families. Um, we even have some students that come into our program and then apply for a program called HPSP, the Health Profession Scholarship Program. Um, and they then go, actually the military pays for their school and then they go um, join either the Army, the Air Force, or the Navy when they finish um, graduation. Um, let's see, and can you go to the next slide, please? Um, our students take uh, additional courses in substance abuse, culture, um, and the family deployment life cycle, as well as trauma related to military service. There's eight additional credits um, taken in both uh, the master's level concentration and also the doctoral level concentration. In addition, our students have an opportunity to participate in experiential groups weekly with a professor who has uh, experience serving in the military. This year, we have three of those groups, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon. Um, and in these groups, we have an opportunity to introduce um, topics uh, related to military and veteran culture and um, experiences. We have military and veteran students who aren't necessarily in the concentration, but wanna share their expertise. Um, with our civilian students, and they have really rich conversations um, concerning military veterans and their families. Um, and also, our students are involved in creating posters for national conferences. Um, they do volunteer work with military veterans and their families in the community. Um, additionally, we support engagement programs each year, which allow our students additional interaction with our population. This year, we delivered packages with bears that had little recording devices in them. Um, and those recording devices were for the loved ones to record a special message for their children. Um, in these packages, the children were also given craft activities and books related to social emotional development. Um, and one of the books that we gave them was called Invisible Strings. And that talks about hearts being connected even when they're miles apart. Um, these package were, packages were given directly to families, to military families of deploying service members by our students. Um, we also host special guest speakers. This Friday, we're having a speaker who's going to be discussing, um, she's a retired Air Force veteran, and she'll be discussing um, women veterans um, in the past, in the present, where they're going, and specific um, information about their um, readjustment following service. Um, and we also have other guest speakers who speak about a variety of topics depending on the interest of our group of students and the needs of our military and veteran students um, at the time. Um, and I think that's, uh, if we could go to the next slide, please. And our students have an opportunity. Oh, one thing I didn't talk about on the last slide was that um, our doctoral students focus their research on any area they'd like as long as it's related to military, veterans, um, and or their families. Um, and we help them get connected with experts in that area so that they can do um, research that's meaningful to them and to the population. 
And finally, our students have an opportunity to compete for their practicums and or their internships in a variety of federal, state, and nonprofit sites um, where there are veterans or military, and those are all over our local area. Um, we have some of the, the Bedford VA. We have a good working relationship with them and several students who have their um, internships or practicums there, um, and then also in many other site, sites um, in the area as well. And that concludes my discussion on the military and veteran psychology concentration. Please feel free to send me any emails if you have additional questions, or I, guess, I think we're gonna take some questions here too. Great, thank you, Dr. DeLimpia. Uh, so we can move on to the next slide, which is our second poll of today's webinar. Um, so if everyone could just take a moment and answer when they plan to start graduate school, um, and then we'll be able to hear from Mario Murga about um, a little bit about the admissions process. Okay, so it looks a lot like a lot of you are interested in fall 2021, um, and a few others are still undecided, which is obviously not a problem. Um, so we will uh, turn things over now to Mario Murga. Thank you, Sarah, so much. Yes, this is Mario Murga, Director of Admissions, and thank you for taking this previous poll because it allows me to be more efficient and to help you uh, decide about William James and how to apply to it. So most of you uh, chose fall 2021. We are accepting applications for spring and fall 2021. And I wanted to give you a primer that the deadlines for fall 2021 are twofold. We have an early consideration in that deadline is Wednesday, December 9th, 2021. And then we have a general uh, deadline and that is Wednesday, January 6th, 2021. So those of you who may have been uh, working on their applications know this. Those of you who haven't yet, I'm happy to tell you that we have a very user-friendly application, online application, to which you will upload most of the elements that you need to present. Uh, there are two elements that would come separately. That will be your transcripts that I urge you to order them as early as possible. If you haven't graduated yet, it's fine if, um, if you, were to enroll at William James College, uh, we will expect to receive your final transcript, obviously, and the other element that will come separately will be any test scores. If there are any international students here in the audience today, um, we will ask you for the TOEFL. Uh, the GRE is required, the general GRE, but only for one program, the clinical PsyD program. Okay, and um, there were 71% of you interested in, in the clinical PsyD program. Um, the rest is fairly self-explanatory. When you open an application to William James, I wanted to say that uh, we're happy to host you in further webinars. We have plenty of those that are program-based, degree program-based, and also I lead a webinar called Demystifying the Application Process, and I'll be happy to host you. However, you do not need to wait to ask your questions. Any details that you may need, we're happy to address those in a couple of slides from now, there will be contact information for each one of us, including financial aid and admissions. And uh, yes, let us move forward. This is the favorite part of ours for all webinars is the questions and answers. So I'll give it back to Sarah. Thanks, Mario. So we've reached our final um, Q&A session for today's webinar. So um, definitely send in any questions you have or anything you need more clarification on into the question box. Um, this could be directed at any of the presentation or presenters that you heard from today, or it could be a more general question. Um, so we've already got some in now. So we have one here. What are William James plans for spring or fall 21 if COVID is still a significant public health issue at that time? Um, so I don't know if Mario, you wanna answer maybe for the admissions process or classes and then um, we can hear from maybe some of the panelists on, on more specifics. I will be happy to. In speaking for, for admissions here, we are fully equipped and ready to conduct our interviews at a distance. 
as you may have visited our website, you will see right in the front on the first page, there's COVID-19 information and how it affects the learning here. And I'm happy to tell you that we have moved online and we are doing very, very well there. We had experience on this in the past and I think that has been a smooth transition. So uh, rest assured, it will be supported very well uh, should we continue to uh, be online to secure the health of our uh, students and faculty. If anybody else would like to chime in, Um, this is um, Jill Bloom. I can just speak to, um, I, I was at a recent meeting and there isn't a decision that has been made yet for spring semester, um, but certainly, you know, that will be, that is being carefully considered and given the conditions of the pandemic. Um, in terms of uh, one of the things that's at the Center of Multicultural Global Mental Health, Health for all of our immersion programs, we are also carefully considering the um, possibility of, of, of offering them next summer, or and actually the earliest is in May. The and we and the Kenya program is offered in in um, December. So we are constantly evaluating, and we'll be making that decision at some point in the next couple months. Okay, thank you. Um, did anyone else want to want to add anything um, to this conversation? Same for the Ecuador program. I just wanted to concur the information. Okay, great. Uh, we have another question here about um, the admission rate for the clinical PsyD program, about how many students apply um, and how difficult is it um, to get into that program? Well, certainly. Um, we receive per year about, hmm, 250 to 300 applications. The entering cohorts are between 90 and 100 students. It is a large program. However, the class sizes remain small and very much as Sarah mentioned earlier in this webinar, the attention to the professional growth in the classroom, in the field and afterwards is very important to us. So. Uh, I invite you to reach to us with uh, specific questions, should uh, uh, you have them and with regard to the scores of the GREs or the GPA, we'll be happy to address those. As I mentioned, there will be a slide coming up actually very soon with contact information and should you prefer also to have a phone conversation, we'd love to do that. We can set up a Zoom also to speak with you personally and thank you for that question. Okay, thanks, Mario. Uh, we have another question here asking um, to you, Dr. Benassar, to talk a little bit more about the scholarship available for the Latino Mental Health Program um, and what the requirements are for that. Absolutely. Um, great question. So um, we prefer, like, uh, if you decide to apply to William James, um, uninterested, most people um, indicate they're interested in one of the concentrations that you um, apply for the internship, uh, for the scholarship um, before you come in, uh, but we keep it open until we find an, an appropriate uh, candidate. Um, the requirements basically is to demonstrate that you have a strong interest in working with this community, uh, that it's a um, Commitment. I mean, some people have had uh, more opportunities to have experience, so we did. We do take that in consideration. That is not uh, only for the people who have had the privilege of working a lot in diverse, um, marginalized um, a, a populations, um, but that can demonstrate that uh, commitment to work with this community and how it would, uh, how would the scholarship um, uh, kind of allow support. Um, your education and the opportunity for you to work with um, this population. Um, the, the application, it's in um, the website, is a very simple demographics answering three questions, uh, kind of summarizing what I just said. Um, and I'm happy to uh, answer more individual questions like Mario was saying too, um, uh, if you email me or, or call me. Okay, thank you. 
Um, a similar question we have um, at someone here asking about um, scholarship or financial aid opportunities for any of the other concentrations. If there's any um, anything specific like, like that concent or like that scholarship for any of the other programs. Thank you for that question. This is Dr. Court. Um, I wanted to just share with all of you um, a scholarship opportunity that we have at the Center for Multicultural and Global Mental Health. Um, we have a scholarship uh, that we refer to as Serving the Mental Health Needs of the Underserved Scholarship. And that program uh, provides um, two thirds of tuition cost. Um, it's a highly competitive scholarship that goes to six, six um, applicants annually. So if you're gonna be applying, please make sure that you go to the um, Center for Multicultural and Global Mental Health website and click on the Serving the Mental Health Needs of the Underserved Scholarship. And um, if you think that you're eligible, please apply. We are particularly interested in individuals who are uh, committed to promoting social justice and addressing mental health disparities among historically marginalized groups in the US. So we're really interested in recruiting and training students who plan to develop careers where they're providing culturally informed mental health services to underserved communities. And those communities can be, might be rural communities, um, uh, individuals who uh, come from underserved communities could be individuals with substance use disorders, immigrants and refugees, sexual minorities, individuals with disabilities, trauma and mm -hmm. ex trauma uh, exposed children, religious minorities, etc. So, um, if you know that that uh, is part of your career plan um, and uh, you are eligible for the scholarship, please consider applying. If I could add, uh, uh, thank you for the call for saying, I could add that uh, for the ones that are going to be applying and are interested in scholarships, you you can apply to um, to several scholarships. If you were to be awarded more than one scholarship, you um, are only uh, accept the the higher the higher bid basically, uh, but you are allowed to uh, kind of um, you know be considered for for several scholarships at the school. Okay, thank you, uh, both of you, for that insight. Um, we have another question here asking um, if you could provide some examples of student research um, related to some of these different concentrations. Um, so maybe we'll start with Dr. DeLimpsia um, and talk about a little bit about military and veterans, and then we can move around um, and hear from um, the different panelists today. Sorry, you, you want me to talk about military and veterans? students or the specialization again i'm sorry i missed the uh, um no problem this question, part of the is just question. Asking if you have um examples of um, some of the research that students have have done oh. in the concentration of course so we have had um students look at um the experience of women veterans um transitioning out of the military in some areas of resilience we've had um Students have looked at what it's like to be um, a counselor um, treating trauma of military and veterans and what things were most helpful for those um, providers. Um, and um, we have also looked at the support services for military and veterans and evaluated those in the area to see which ones were the strongest and which ones needed the most support and help. Um, and uh, those are just a few um, examples. I can go next. Great. If you want. Okay, great. Thank you, Dr. Benesar. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is Dr. Benesar. <laughs> uh, so in the Latino mental health program, uh, there's a, a wide variety in terms of the doctoral projects or, or research interests that uh, students have. Um, in terms of faculty, uh, uh, Dr. Contreras, who's in the counseling department, uh, is um, very involved in uh, human trafficking, sex trafficking, uh, and immigra uh, immigration evaluations and so forth. So students in any program that is interested in, in um, that involvement is welcome to uh, sometimes join and, and uh, help with the data and so forth. Um, the counseling program doesn't have direct research program, but again, these 
students have the opportunity to join faculty um, as a work study student and, and so forth uh, with those interests. And um, the, the doctoral projects uh, at that level um, varies greatly from specific immigration issues, immigration and acculturation, language being bilingual, uh, therapist assumptions, um, and so forth. Um, we do, I think, have um, samples, if you go to the uh, WJC website, of even uh, summaries of doctoral projects. I believe that's accessible if people are interested. But, uh, and last, I was going to add, um, it, we're involved with two uh, research projects in Ecuador. Um, with the institutions that we go uh, in the summer immersion program, we are collaborating um, a, with the depression attitudes um, a research, and I'm starting. We're starting a collaboration with uh, creating an app uh, for depression and anxiety uh, in Spanish. Everything um, uh, collaborating with that. So, and that's part of a, a bigger research uh, there. And several students are actually directly working with that project. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, did anyone else want to add something um, about doc projects that you've um, seen or been a part of? Yes, this is Dr. Bloom. Uh, and in global mental health, there have been a number of, of really very interesting doc projects. Uh, one, a current one, that a uh, student is just in the process of, just finish, has just finished up her, her proposal and looking at resiliency in refugee children. Um, uh, another uh, study that was completed uh, two years ago was looking at, at women's empowerment in Kenya. And uh, a third was uh, based on, on doing a program evaluation of the Syrian refugee humanitarian project that I had spoken about earlier. And, and then several students have done some very interesting studies on um, different aspects of, of immig immigration. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about Dr. Vuki or Dr. Court? Yes, thanks, Sarah. I was just about to, uh, to speak. So this is Dr. Vuki. And so, again, as the concentration is just launching, um, we're uh, more and more students will be joining the concentration. But I have been involved with other DP projects or committees in the past, and, and some of those um, involving with Asian immigrant and refugee um, topics. And one in particular was a young woman who was of Bhutanese descent and she actually went back to the refugee camps and did um, interviews on the trauma and just kind of the life of living in a refugee camp. Um, many of the students are looking at acculturation um, and personality and depression among young adults of Chinese descent. Another one um, just completed her project and looking at parenting styles of those of those who are more immigrant um, in parents versus those who have been here second or third generation. Okay, um, this is Dr. Court. Um, in the African and Caribbean mental health concentration, uh, students, examples of students, DPs, um, have been on more recently. Um, one of our student leaders completed a doctoral project that in which he developed a program um, for black high school students to introduce them to mental health careers in order to increase the likelihood that they might um, pursue a career um, in the psychological and mental health field in order to address the issues with disparities that we have. Um, another student um, uh, is currently examining the ways in which one's um, biracial and bicultural identity might impact um, your sense of belongingness. And she's looking at that among college students. Um, we have yet another student who combines a, a, a global interest um, with her work, and she is focusing on examining and exploring the utility of um, integrating music um, into standard evidence-based treatments for um, individuals who are coming from communities and cultures that are generally um, uh, underserved in the mental health field. So those are a couple of examples. Thank you all. Um, I know I love hearing about the different research um, interests of all of our students. Um, so we can move on to the next slide since we have only about a minute left. 
Um, and here's the contact information that has been mentioned a few times throughout the webinar today. So um, I'll just reiterate that you can download all the slides that you've seen today um, in the handout section. So I definitely encourage everyone to take a minute to do that. Um, and if you move on to the next slide, I'll just mention that um, you can find so much more information um, about all of our programs, about the different concentrations at our website, williamjames.edu. And um, you can connect with us on any of these social media platforms, um, which is really a good way to um, stay connected, to be informed, um, and really get a feel for what it's like at William James College. So thank you all for joining us this afternoon, um, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Good afternoon.